We've always thought of uh, being thin as a uh, sign of health and um, uh, worry a little bit about people with a lot of muscle, or, or at least people that are heavy, and have often uh, bunched having a lot of muscle in there as well. And that may be true when you're young. I think that's still debatable. However, once you hit your mid-60s, loss of muscle is a big, big deal. Um, <clears throat> it's called sarcopenia. Sarco means muscle and uh, penia means loss of. Uh, I had a patient, I was seeing a patient this past week, um, it's a female that's been with me for years and uh, has always done great in terms of diet, um, medications, all of the other uh, things associated with managing cardiovascular risk. However, this patient's uh, significantly over 65 and has always had some concern about um, muscle training. Um, she reminds me of my wife. Janice likes to say, oh, I'm saving myself. Well, you know, you can't save yourself with muscle training. You um, or save yourself by not doing muscle training. You need to do it. Now, <clears throat> why is that? We'll go over that in this video. And actually, we'll talk about a video, I mean, a, a study, which was published in Nature Magazine, which um, actually shows that the same risk factors for heart attack and stroke are also risk factors for loss of muscle mass as we age. Now, what does that mean? Again, let's just uh, focus a little bit more on, first we'll talk about the study, then we'll get into um, the problems associated with loss of muscle mass and their big ones. <clears throat> But let's go back. Uh, the study was published in Nature magazine. I'll uh, go into the title page and into some details uh, in a few minutes, but here's what they found. Let's go straight to the punchline. Sarcopenia, or muscle loss, is independently associated with CVRVF cardiovascular risk factors, and in particular is associated with diabetes and hypertension. The prevalence of muscle loss increased streak, uh, in other words, the amount, the number of people that had muscle loss increased steeply with increasing number of cardiovascular risk factors. Therefore, the prevention and treatment of cardiovascular risk factors may be useful in preventing and delaying onset of muscle loss. Now, again, <clears throat> well, muscle loss is, you know, what it's, becoming a little old man or a little old lady. This guy's not got a lot of sarcopenia, but here's the issue. Um, one of many, many issues associated with um, loss of muscles as we get age 65. Here's another way of looking at it. Age 65 and above, one out of three people fall each year. Age 72 and above, you fall every other year. 80, you and above, you start falling every year. And the patient I mentioned earlier has had a couple of uh, falls with significant injuries already. So again, falls become a bigger and bigger risk factor for um, disability as we get older. <clears throat> now, there's another issue regarding um, loss of muscle mass. And if you haven't seen my video on mitochondria and their central role in aging, uh, go back and look at it. I just did it recently and it's coming out as one of my more popular videos. Um, again, um, my wife and some others told me, uh, don't get into, don't write something on mitochondria. Nobody's going to understand it. Well, they don't really understand the viewership of this channel. It's uh, again coming out as one of the more popular videos of the group, people are beginning to understand what mitochondria are and why they're critical to aging. Well, guess what? What, what has muscle mass got to do with mitochondria? Everything. Maybe the highest concentration of mitochondria in your body is in your heart muscle, but by far the largest amount, mass of uh, mitochondria, is in your muscle tissues. So <clears throat> muscle tissue is critical 
So this is another video. I, this is an old video I did, a, what, almost two years ago on, uh, one, on the most effective way of maintaining uh, mitochondrial mass. It's called uh, HIIT, High Intensity Interval Training. And again, we're talking about high intensity interval trainings on a treadmill, on a bicycle, uh, on an indoor bike. We're talking about getting those big muscles because that's where most of your mitochondria in your body reside. Now, <clears throat> even if you're not, you know, you go back to that picture of the fellow that uh, fell on the stairs and I said, well, maybe he doesn't have uh, muscle loss. You know what? Maybe he does. This is one of the deceptive things that you see with uh, muscle loss as people get older, especially when they're sedentary. This is a young active person, and uh, I believe this was uh, an MRI. This is muscle, this gray tissue here, and that darker gray tissue is fat. Look at this. So you've, with older people, you tend to have, even if we maintain our weight, unless we do significant work on resistance training and interval training, we lose our muscle mass, especially as we get into our mid-60s. Here's another example, and again, it's just the same thing. Age 25, uh, much more muscle and therefore much more mitochondria, much more uh, calorie burn uh, than fat. Uh, age 63, you see what's going on. So again, our goal is to go back, continue to grow that muscle mass, keep it there. Um, <clears throat> In this last uh, video that I mentioned, by the way, I talk about the Mayo Clinic study. Um, There's a Dr. Nair at Mayo Clinic who basically took three groups of people, uh, 20 to 30 year olds, 40, 50 year olds, and uh, 70 and 80 year olds, put them through different types of training, um, cardiovascular training, you know, low intensity, um, resistance training, and uh, high intensity intervals. By far, the best was high-intensity intervals. Uh, resistance training was very good as well. And here's the thing. The 80-year-olds benefited the most. Many of them doubled their mitochondrial mass with high-intensity interval training. So again, <clears throat> uh, it's use it or lose it. So uh, here, to the, uh, the study itself, <clears throat> Wait a minute, before we do, I need to introduce myself real quick. My name is Ford Brewer, F-R-D Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R. -E I started off as an ER doc, um, focused on uh, emergency medicine, but then uh, changed focus as I realized that most of the things people are bringing into the ER are, um, most of that disability and, and disease is preventable. I went to Johns Hopkins to get training in it and uh, loved it, it, did well, ended up running the program, and for the past 30 years since then, I've been working with primary care docs, staffs as, uh, uh, as large as 800 and more uh, doctors, and with my share of patients as well, helping them to focus on prevention, because um, prevention's a heck of a lot better than seeking a cure after the fact. Just ask your, uh, anyone you know that's had a heart attack or stroke. So, back to the study itself, and again, that's what this channel is about, increasing conversation and focus around prevention. And um, this one today is on improving muscle mass and associating muscle mass with uh, some of the other risk factors. Actually, the interesting part of this study is they showed that the same risk factors for insulin resistance and diabetes in the elderly are also risk factors for loss of muscle mass or sarcopenia. So this was in uh, Nature Magazine. Let me pull this image down just, uh, just a little bit. Well, I don't think it's working, but as you see there, let me... Hmm. Well, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to to get that image to come down. It's in Nature Magazine, uh, August uh, 29th of 2017, and I'll give you a link to it under the, under the video. Um, 
The full title is uh, Increased Risk of Sarcopenia or Muscle Loss in Patients with Cardiovascular Risk Factors in Suburban Dwelling Older Chinese using the uh, AWGS definition. Now, you may look at that and say, wait a minute, I'm a, I'm a Caucasian female. What's this? What of older Chinese uh, suburb, suburb dwellers have to do with me? The DH here stands for Dirty Harry, and my favorite quote from Dirty Harry is, are you feeling lucky? Um, the mitochondria issues and risk factors for aging um, for these people is the same as it is. It's a universal issue. I'll go into a couple of discussion points. Uh, again, prevalence of muscle loss was significantly proportional to the number of cardiovascular risk factor components. In other words, every, uh, every next uh, cardiovascular risk factor you had, you greatly increased your risk of having muscle loss. Particularly, diabetes and hypertension were significantly associated with uh, higher risk. Um, the, uh, these risks were independent of other confounding factors, and uh, they've seen this before. This is not new. Some of, the, some of this is new. The, the fact that uh, you get additional um, increase of risk with every risk factor, that's somewhat new in this, uh, in this study. Let me cover just a, another couple of things, and we will uh, wrap up. <clears throat> Now, in this study, the univariate analysis showed no correlation between muscle loss and hypertension. And I'm going to just, again, for those of you that want to get geeky on epidemiology, univariate means you just look at relationships and you don't look at confounding factors. You remember we talked about confounders may be, or there's something that's associated with the outcome and the risk factor, and they may actually change whether you see um, risk or not. And that's what happened in this uh, Chinese population. If you just looked overall at the Chinese population here, um, high blood pressure didn't appear to be associated with, um, uh, with muscle loss. However, after you did what we call a multivariate statistical analysis, it took out the confound founders, things that were related both to hypertension and to muscle loss like age is obviously associated with that. Uh, smoking can be associated with that. Um, diabetes itself can be associated with that. So once you take those confounders out, hypertension was the second most significant feature. So <clears throat> what are some, again, well here are some of the confounders, age, gender, BMI, marital status, educational level, and smoking. So once you uh, factor all those out in this multivariate analysis, then again, hypertension becomes a big, big issue. Um, that is not new. There have been other studies which have shown hypertension associated with, um, uh, with muscle loss as well. Now, they talk a little bit about potential mechanisms. There's not enough information right now to understand clearly, but most of the people that have watched uh, things on this channel have seen and understand what inflammation is. Uh, they understand the processes where mast cells, cytokines, TNF-alpha, AGE, advanced glycation products, you know, where glucose is bound to the proteins. Um, they cause low-grade infection. I mean, not infection, low-grade inflammation. And um, there, there's a significant and strong suggestion that that inflammation impairs blood flow, damaging microvascular endothelium. Now, <clears throat> I'll put a quick plug in. As, as you may know, we have, we have created a course on cardiovascular inflammation. It's about the cost of a book. And if you have, uh, we're trying to figure out how to give it away uh, for free too, if you have concerns about paying uh, that much for it. Um, Keep your eyes open, go to our uh, website and uh, take a look. It gets deep in terms of um, how to measure your own cardiovascular inflammation. You know, it's one thing to sit and read about it and listen to videos. It's another to think about measuring your own, and you can do that. 
So again, this is the, uh, the image showing prevalence or the percentage of muscle loss and the number of risk factors. Zero, eight percent. One risk factor, 11 percent. Three risk factors, up to 22 um, percent. I would go in, this, uh, these next couple of tables show how when you look at it from univariate uh, uh, focus and then go in and do the uh, multivariate and get rid of the confounders, hypertension becomes a big deal. But we're not going to, we're getting late in terms of the video. I've, um, I've kept you long enough. Thank you very much for your interest.